First, integrating the pointwise form of Ampere's law over a two-dimensional surface, we get integrating S. We'll take the left-hand side of this equation. So we have the curl of H and all of that and dotted with n hat ds as we're looking at flux through the surface. And on the right side, we get similar. We just fill in j dot n hat ds plus dd dt dot n hat ds. All right, so we've applied this to the surface. n hat is the unit vector pointing outward from the surface. Um, next, we use Stokes' theorem. That's from vector calculus. And but for the B field in Stokes' theorem, we're going to put in H. So we have the curl of B. Here we have the curl of H. So we're going to apply it to our H field. And um, so applying Stokes' theorem, we can write uh, this. I don't, let me not rewrite that again, we already have it. So we're going to basically use Stokes' theorem to rewrite a surface integral as a line integral. So I'm going to write, replace this with the right hand side of what's here. So we have a, now a closed contour integral of h dot dl. And now I can get, set that equal to what's on the right side of this equation. And that's it, we just did it. So if you look at this, this is the left left side of the integral form and here is the right hand side. We've written we've gone from the pointwise form to the integral form of Ampere's law. This slide summarizes the different forms of Ampere's law along with the conduction current density and displacement current terms. We showed how you can use Stokes' theorem to go to the integral form. You could also do this in reverse, so you could also go that way. Also shown here is Ampere's law in the um, phasor domain. To convert to the phasor domain, we write each component uh, h and e as a vector phasor. And I'm seeing I'm missing one right here, so I will have to add that. So all the phasor domain expressions have vector phasors. And also the time derivatives are j omega. At the bottom of this slide are the two conduction current terms. And um, so sometimes you'll see this written with C subscript. All right, so hopefully you feel more comfortable with all these different versions of these e expressions. All right, let's work through an example. Let's consider a region of dry soil. For example, maybe we'll consider this to be the ground that, un that is underneath our transmission line with the airplane inside of it. And sigma, mu, and r, uh, relative mu and r are given. So over the frequency range of the E1 component, we're going to go from 1 to 300 megahertz. We want to know, is the magnetic field in the material generated primarily by the movement of charges, the conduction current, or by changing electric fields, displacement current. 